Who will be the next Deron Bland for the Dallas Cowboys? All that and more this episode of the Locked On Cowboys Podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every Locked day. On. Locked On. Locked, Locked On. Locked on Cowboys. Welcome back to the Lot On Cowboys podcast, part of the Lot On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Lockdown NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Landon McCool. You can check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. Landon, it is September 1st, and that means we are officially in football season. How you doing, buddy? Good. I mean, and not even that, uh, you know, starting uh, Tuesday or Monday or however you're going to celebrate your week, it's football week. I mean, it's it's started. We, we are here. We made it. Congratulations. You made it. You made yeah. it to Labor Day. We're going to have a long weekend, and we've got football to talk about, so let's get into it. Yeah, we've got a bunch of really good questions. The first one comes from uh, a good friend, Goran. He wants to know, pick your – he wants to know, pick your Deron Bland of 2023, a guy who isn't a starter yet or really an established front-end depth piece who emerges as a big-time player by the end of the season. It's a good question. Obviously, I think that there's a couple of guys that, you know, kind of fit the bill there on both sides of the ball. Um, you know, quarterback's such a different position because it's like it's it's a position that you're not the starter, but you could definitely see playing time at. So it, it kind of allows for that sort of situation. So kind of keeping that in mind, and, and it's not quite the same kind of fit, but I, I and I, I, we talked a lot, but Jalen Tolbert to me is, and I guess he's not a rookie. Right. No, that's he's okay. It doesn't have player. to be a rookie. A young yeah, player. Yeah. He's a young player, hasn't played a lot. And obviously, we've talked a lot about Tolbert and, and what a great season he is. Uh, but I think because of that, that's why he fits the bill here so well. Right. Like he's a guy that you, you kind of aren't, weren't expecting a lot coming into uh, to training camp. Um, or you were you were excited to see exactly what you were going to get from him. Right. Now it's to the point where it's not even just like, oh, he passed the bar and, and he's, and he's, you know, uh, he did what he had to do to get the fourth receiver position. Now it's about the fact that he, you feel like he could be more than that. He could be a guy that you're you're yearning to get on the field, that you're you know game planning to get on the field to get touches, uh, and and that's really exciting. So I, I think as far as a guy that uh, you know we liked a lot that that potentially could break out to to kind of prove to be something more, uh, I think Tolbert kind of fits that bill a little bit. Well, and if you remember last year with Bland, he was just one injury away from playing. 75 percent of the snaps in the game and yep. that injury was a jordan lewis injury early in the year and then once anthony brown got hurt later in the year he was a full-time player yep. kind of out of necessity now obviously we're not hoping for that for jalen tolbert because that means no. that you lost a really good player but there is a uh, i mean i think there's a very likely scenario here where somebody goes down let's say again not a super major injury but for four weeks lands on the short-term sure. ir yeah and jalen tolbert's now playing 47 snaps a game like that could very easily happen and then like bland would it shock you if jalen tolbert was so good that when let's say it's michael gallup right mm -hmm. would it shock you if tolbert plays so well that when gallup's back they don't necessarily go right back to him in the starting lineup i i mean i think that that's you know that's at this point we were going into the end of this conversation at, at, at training camp as can Tolbert pushed Gallup for that third yeah. spot. So, uh, yeah, I think if if there's an injury long term and Tolbert shows you something that uh, that Gallup hasn't, I think it's it's extremely likely that they kind of go with the younger, cheaper guy and and uh, just see how it all plays out at the end of the season. All right, I got a defensive player for you that I'm going to mention. What about Marquise Bell, who is yeah. buried on the depth chart? Right, he's behind J. Ron Curse and Malik Hooker and Donovan Wilson, and probably is even Israel Makamu and maybe Wanye Thomas. But he's probably the third linebacker on this team, and he's somebody that has a lot of athleticism. He's got size. It wouldn't shock me at all if Dan Quinn, in the early part of the season, tries to get him five or six snaps a game just to kind of get his feet wet. But by the end of the year. 
maybe after some injuries happen. Remember, J. Ron Curse, I believe, is going into his age 30 mm-hmm. or 31 yeah. season. It's just Marquise Bell, whose athleticism stands out so much that you feel like we kind of need him to be on the field in our three you know, safety packages. Yeah, and Curse is the one of our the only one of our safeties that's still on a one year deal. That's still yeah. Yeah, his contract expires this year, so you know it could be that that uh, Bell is 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 getting opportunity to kind of play the linebacker position, but also kind of you know uh, uh, audition for that for that Curse role for next season, which right? we love. But Curse has been banged up, and it's it's a lot just because of his playing style. Like he's yeah. so physical, but that's not somebody who's been able to stay healthy a bunch throughout his career. Yeah, so you definitely need someone that's going to be able to fit in there because it is likely that you'll see some kind of curse injury or some sort of you know limitation because just because of how physical he plays. and the nature of that position. He's he's yeah. an undersized box player, and I think you know, look, if I could throw in another name into this mix, I, I think a name you mentioned, I think Wanye Thomas is another guy who I feel like could easily be fall into this category as well, right? A, a guy that. Uh, you know, that, that gets opportunities because of an injury or, or just because they want him to have opportunities. We've seen when he's on the field that he uh, he makes plays. You know, he, he, he's around the ball. So uh, it, he could be a guy that, that just kind of gets some opportunity and, and then really runs with it. I, I got one more that I mentioned. Is there a chance yeah. that this year's Deron Bland is Deron Bland, right? Like he just <laughs> ends up taking that yeah. step as a year two corner. And it's like, maybe he should be the second corner opposite of, Trayvon Diggs because he's you know he's got a ton of size and athleticism and Gilmore's more suited to be the third guy that you know kind of can get some breaks as a game goes on. Yeah, I mean it certainly is possible that Bland takes what he did last year uh, and instead of just kind of continuing, like takes another step, you know, another big step this year with uh, because of all the experience. We talked about this. These guys that get experience when when they're young, they really tend to take a step the next year. So. The fact that we we kind of have all just assumed that Bland took his step, right? Yeah. He took his step early uh, his rookie year. Maybe there's another step for him to take after getting all that experience and, and, and kind of taking his game to a you know Pro Bowl level. You know, that this yeah. second year that would be really great. All right, Lena, let's talk about each position group going forward and if they're better or worse than they were at this time last year. We will do that next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is so easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props to NFL futures bets. You can even bet on how many receiving yards will Deuce Vaughn have in the first game of the year. So many bets available to you right now. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer that you won't want to miss. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast. We want to thank you for making us your first listen every day. The Locked On Ultimate NFL Season Preview is here. The seven-episode extravaganza brings opinions, analysis, and plenty of debate from all 32 of our Locked On NFL hosts with added insights from our national experts. It's a can't-miss series before the season kicks off. Catch every episode on Locked On NFL or, or on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Landon, you had a bunch of fun with those other <laughs> NFC East hosts. Uh, you need to go check it out. Yeah, fun is one way to define it. Uh, I felt like I was fighting alligators all night. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it, we we definitely uh, defend the star a lot on yeah. that uh, it, during that little podcast series for sure. All right, let's get to our next question. This one from Robbie. He wants to know, now that the dust has settled on the 53-man roster, what position groups do you feel are weaker than last year? So let's go through every one of them. Quarterback. Uh, I think it's I think it's stronger than it was last. I mean, year. you I, also have a bigger clear. sample size than Cooper Rush. That's right, and you've got a, a more talented upside third third quarterback. I, I think it's a more balanced room. Sure, running back. I think this is the toughest one. I, honestly, I, I tend to think that it could be a step forward because you're going to get a larger, obviously, a larger sample size of of uh, the best running back on this team. 
Um, but the, but the question is what happens when Paul is on the field, you know, and, 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 yeah. and what happens with those backup guys? I think at this point, I'm going to call this a push I would agree uh, with, with, with the opportunity to be better wide receiver. I, I don't even think this one's close. Remember at this time last year, it was Dennis Houston and semi Fahoku as your number two and number three receivers. Jalen Tolbert wasn't even active, uh, going into this year, Dennis Houston and semi Fahoku are on practice squads on other teams. Like that's just how much better of a situation is- we're at. Is there a group that has improved more than this group? No, I don't think so. No. I, I think it's pretty pretty incredible, honestly. Yeah. Now, if you want to make an argument, which position group is the weakest from last year? I, I'm going to go ahead and say tight end. It's got to be the closest, but I think a lot of it has to do with unknown. You know, yeah. it's it, it's there's just so much unknown here that uh, uh, there. I think you're saying it's less, yes, because of the lack of certainty at the position. Offensive line. This one's interesting because I feel better about the starting five than I did at this time last year, but I don't know if I feel as good about the depth. I think I feel better because simply because we didn't really know exactly at this point last year. Well, first of all, at this point last year, we said Tyler Smith was slated to start as the week one starter at left tackle. We didn't really exactly know how. As I said, I feel better about this, the starting line. I don't know if I feel better about the depth though, but I guess, but yeah. Okay. So I think that this is, where I'm going with this is that now we know we have a solid backup at left tackle in Tyler Smith. Right. Yep. Uh, so I, I do feel, I think better about the situation a, that are where I was a year ago. Uh, yeah. I feel better about the starters period. Yeah. I feel better mm-hmm. about where we were with the backups a year ago, but maybe not where we were at the end of the season last year. If yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Man, it just feels like they're one veteran like a six-year veteran into your swing guy away from just feeling so much better about this into your offensive line um pro- again we talked about this earlier this week but if there's one hole in the roster that's probably what it is right now i mean listen having the backup interior swing offensive lineman as your one hole on a roster means you probably got a pretty could good be, roster could be worse uh let's do edge rushers mm-hmm. better Simply because of improvement, you know. I, I think Paul. Uh, I think uh, you're going to see a better Micah Parsons than you did last year. I would agree. I would say it's Sam Williams is probably taking a step. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah I and know, it, right? we we saw Dante Fowler last year, the first year of the team, play really well, and now he's your fifth edge Fifth. guy right <laughs> yeah. you have demarcus you have demarcus lawrence who's getting up there in age by the way i don't know if you saw this did you see the cowboys official roster they had all the numbers and they had all the heights and weights i saw i think demarcus lawrence was listed at 251 that sounds right and it, let me t- i was just going to mention this we haven't talked a ton about D-Law, you know and and, and it's because you know the, the same reason the tyrant smith right you just he's not taking a ton of reps because they're trying to preserve him but he has looked fantastic and and, and, and he's really spelt he's like really lost the weight and so that doesn't surprise me that he's at 251 yep. uh and i think you know if i'm not mistaken this could be is this his first off season without any kind of like you know like major injury, injury. Major yeah, injury recovery so. process so uh yeah he could actually be better than he was last year just simply because his role may be more codified and he may be you know just a little bit better ready to handle the kind of situation that he's headed in uh, defensive tackle. Uh, obviously, Oso Digizua made a step up last year. We expect big things. You have Mozzie Smith. You have Jonathan Hankins, who they didn't have at this time last year. They were playing a bunch of you know kind of no name guys. Neville Gallimore has stepped up a little bit. I, I'm optimistic that this group should be better. Oh yeah, I, I would say this group's better. I mean, simply because of the the names you mentioned, right? They added Han- Hankins. I think Osa's taken a step from where he was last year. Uh, we didn't even meet, mention Golson, who's also part of this group, who I think uh, has you know was a, a revelation to the team later in the season as far as pass rush goes. So yeah, I think this is a better group than it was last year. Linebacker, obviously, Leighton Van Der Esch had a really good year last year. We didn't know, <laughs> we didn't think Damone Clark was going to play at all last year. So it was Anthony Barr that got a lot of early season reps. I love the first two names that the Cowboys have yeah. here. I just I wish they had one more guy that I felt really good about, like a third round pick from Texas. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, I, I I think it's similar to the offensive line, right? Where I feel good about the top top line gains. I, I, I feel better. The, the I feel like they are better than they were they were as a starter position uh, last year. Yeah. Um, I, I'm I'm worried about the depth. 
Yeah, I I'm think worried about that the depth. That's, yeah. yeah, that's that's the problem is there's just not <laughs> there's not a lot of linebackers that you can go out and get now unless unless you want to wait till like after week one and then go yeah. sign. I saw Deion Jones got cut by the Panthers. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's washed up or not, but that's the type of guy that you could sign after week one and just pay him by a week if you needed a linebacker for a month or so. Which is why they're doing it this way, because they they know that the, that they could easily pick up a linebacker off the street and he could play the next week. That's just the nature of the position. Yeah, uh, cornerbacks. Uh, <laughs> definitely feel better about it now. I mean, I, I I liked Anthony Brown and Jordan Lewis last year as your number two and number three guy. So optimistic about Calvin Joseph, but I, when you can add Stephon Gilmore to be your second corner and you've got a Deron Bland coming off a of five interception season, feel pretty nice about it. Yeah, and then I mean, I just throw. I mean, just talking about the position, maybe not the room. You know, you throw in the fact that you can always just also throw in Mukwamu if you need to to play in the slot, and you got a pretty good slot yeah. player. Uh, yeah, obviously the depth is incredible. One of the best rooms in the league, uh, and definitely better than last year. Safety. It's the same room that we had last year, with the exception of Wani Thomas is now on the fifty-three man roster. The only thing I will say here is. I, I wonder how Donovan Wilson is recovering from the calf injury, still not practicing yet in a full capacity. Um, it does worry me if he misses time early in the year or isn't quite himself because, I mean, he was a really important player for this defense, yeah, at least sure. down the stretch. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and uh, you know, I, I think we'll know more on Monday, obviously, once the practice reports start coming out. Um, you know, I'm hopeful he'll be back. I, I would imagine that the timeline should be that he should be back by week one, but but we'll see. And again, maybe there's a chance the Cowboys just hold him out for one game and you know keep him in Dallas and you know don't have him travel and just have him ready for week two. But they also have a lot of depth there, so they can be patient with this calf injury if they decide to. Last position, special teams. Hmm. I don't, I, don't I mean, I, who knows, man? Like, I, yeah, look, the, the snapper and the punter are the same. So I'll give a push on that. Um, <laughs> the kicker is a kicker. So I'll give a push on that. I, it's, it's hard for me to like, you know, again, well, what's, I, I, it, it's crazy is I feel better about the kicking situation than I did going into the year last year. Cause I just didn't trust Brett Maher. But if you would have asked me like compare this versus like how I felt in week nine last year when Brett Maher was amazing, I would say it's a downgrade, but that's just stop, the, stop. Stop feeling about kickers. That's I, that's that's the exactly. what else. It's not having feelings about kickers. Just just be pleasantly surprised when he makes the next extra point and the next field goal. Just like that's the way to handle it, honestly. Because I it just getting your hopes up that you have a good cook, kicker. Even when you have a good kicker, it's only a matter of time till they're not a good kicker. So it's the, the yes, last. I feel better about the situation. Yeah, sure. I've, last one here. This is the only one that I think I can convince that it's a slight downgrade. Coaching staff. I, I still have this belief that Kellen Moore is going to be – losing Kellen Moore is going to hurt. Maybe you disagree. I, I think I still don't know yet. You know, I think that's where, where, where I'm interested to see. You know, It does feel like the offense is more crisp than it was previously. Um, but that, that doesn't mean anything in, in training camp really. So let's, no, it, let's, it has to be on the field, right? Yeah, let's, let's see it on the field. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, the places that you saw changes like offensive line coach, uh, I think we still have yet to see some of that stuff. I think it's hard to judge some of that stuff early on. Um, I'm interested to see exactly how the run game gets organized differently versus last year. Yeah. Uh, now that you've got, uh, you know, the kind of shuffle that they did from offensive line to the running backs coach and, uh, you know, and just, and how they've changed protections and, and, and how they're running zone and everything. So, um, I, I, I think there's still some uh, jury to be out here, uh, but I, yeah, I think that this certainly is an area where the, you could look at it and, and you could potentially see a downgrade. So all in all, we think this Cowboys roster, at least going into the year is better than it was last year. Now that doesn't mean anything with, because we have injuries that pop up. Some players are going to decline. Some players are going to get better. So, but on paper, on paper, at least we do feel better about this overall team than we did at this time last year. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's hard to doubt that. I mean, they, yeah. they got better at key spots. They shored up a lot of weaknesses. Uh, you know, the kind of talk that we're having about this roster is the kind of talk that you have when you're nitpicking, you know, down yeah. roster backup stuff. And that's that's a good place to be. All right. Let's talk about who we think is going to be the team MVPs on both sides of the ball for the Cowboys next. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. 
Game time is the fastest and the easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you'll have. I absolutely love game time. It's what I use to buy tickets. My favorite part of game time is that it shows you exactly what your seats are going to look like before you buy them. So you're not going to be surprised or anything like that. It's the fastest growing ticket app in the country for a reason. You can buy your tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps and you're set. Plus it's going to show you the all in price. So you don't have to worry about those fees and taxes all racking up. You'll know exactly how much you owe. I, again, I absolutely love it. The tickets are sent directly to your phone, so you never have to dig through your email to find them. Snag the tickets with the, uh, without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code LOCKDOWNNFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. But again, create an account, redeem your code LOCKDOWNNFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, Landon, our last question here uh, is from Caden. He wants us to predict the Cowboys' MVPs on both sides of the ball. Well, I think we have to start with Brock Hoffman. Uh, as the uh, Poor Brock Hoffman. He's been the whipping boy of the he's podcast. He's just been the whipping boy lately. I should, I should probably stop. Um, look, it's hard, it's hard not to answer Micah Parsons and Dak Prescott. Like, you know, it's, I know like, I was thinking the same thing. Like, can I pick somebody else besides Parsons? And Dak? I, I, it's, uh, that's what I was just going to suggest. Like, let's just not pick those guys. Okay, right. Like, cause yeah. that, that just seems like the obvious answer. So excluding those two very obvious choices, right. Um, let's start with defense. I, I tend to think I'm going to pick someone a little bit unconventional here, or at least seemingly. So I'm going to pick Leighton Vander Esch because I, I think I think there's something to the the ability of needing to have that big rangy middle linebacker that makes the rest of the parts fit together right like that makes the run fits work with the, the upfield nature of the defensive line which makes the the pass drops work because he can close down those intermediate windows with his length uh, he can you know pursue uh, running backs to the outside uh, that are trying to exploit our corners in the run game and, and make tackles. I think Damone Clark is, <laughs> I think Damone Clark was the other guy that I was thinking about here because I think Damone Clark's about to have an incredible season. I really do. I do. Yeah. Um, I think that, that, that the way that this defense is set up, there's so many superstars on, on the defensive line and in the, in the secondary that it really need in order for it to work in order for it to all kind of fit together that second level has really got to play at a high level. And that includes obviously guys, uh, you know, that we've talked about like curse and, and, and Clark, but it, it, it a lot mostly includes Leighton Van Der Esch. And, and, and when he plays well, uh, this defense is really, really hard to, to score yep. points on, uh, on the offensive side of the ball. I'm going with Tyler Smith. One of the reasons ah. why we feel so much better about the Cowboys offensive line this year than last year is because number one, we know Tyler Smith can play. And not only yeah. can he play, he can play two positions really well. We were terrified about this offensive line last year, having Tyler Smith play left tackle, what was going on at left guard. And I think everybody just knows, like, hey, if and when Tyron Smith gets hurt, we've got a really good option that you can slide over and you'll figure out left guard later. He's kind of the key to this whole offensive line. Like his versatility and his play is going to make everything work here. Uh and I also think there's a chance that he's just like an all pro player this year. Like he already had that NFL strength from last year. Now that he's got a, a full off season, he's worked on the technique. He's worked on the hand placement. Like why couldn't he just be like the best left guard in the NFL right away? I feel like an idiot now because that's who we should have answered as the Duran bland of this team. Right? Well, that's like, the problem. He, the, the, well, hold on. The question was a down roster piece, like somebody that's not oh, going to start okay. that could take. Fair. That's fair. So we that's had a, that we're going to have that's a big fair. role. Like we but already know. It, Tyler it is interesting. It ties there, right? Like a yeah. guy that uh, played uh, an unex in an unexpected way in his rookie year, right? Like you didn't expect Bland to go out and be yeah. starter in a playoff game. You didn't expect Tyler Smith to practice all summer at left guard and to play left tackle. So. Uh, I think that's a great choice, Marcus. Honestly, like that's you, you, you laid it out perfectly. I mean, 
the the the, the feeling the, the the sense of relief about having Tyron Smith at left tackle is completely because you have Tyler Smith. No. Uh, and and uh, you're right in the sense that not only does he make left guard work, he makes your backup left tackle situation work, which makes your left tackle situation work. So well, uh, I, I think that's really a great choice. And I was thinking about this the other day. Um, the Cowboys have a bunch of players that have already made the Pro Bowl uh, mm-hmm. on their team, right? Like we can go through the list. But like if you had to pick one player – who would be the most ideal player to make that Pro Bowl leap? It's got to be Tyler Smith because let's say he ends up being a Pro Bowl at guard. Now you've got <laughs> two of the top five guards in the NFL on the same team, right? Or let's say Tyler or Tyron Smith goes down and he's a Pro Bowl at left tackle. That means you probably upgraded your left tackle situation despite an injury, which is super, super rare. So if Tyler Smith can make that leap, the Cowboys are going to be just fine on offense. We're not ready to have this conversation yet, but I think there is a conversation to be had of when Tyler Smith and if Tyler Smith has passed Tyron Smith at left tackle. Um, that's for another day, I would say. I just hope uh, we don't have to find out this year. Yeah, let's let's say that. For my defensive MVP, um, oh, we already did, I already did my defensive. For my offensive MVP, I, I was going to pick CeeDee Lamb. I, I just yeah. think that with – we've kind of forgotten about our superstar wide receiver with all the other things that are happening around here. Uh, All the extra attention distributed elsewhere, the changes in the offense. I think all of that is just going to make for a superstar year for CD lamb. Uh, He took a huge step last year. I would not be shocked if he took another step this year. Um, Yeah. I'm I'm super excited to see the results of what this offense is going to produce for him. CD Lamb is one of my favorite players in the league. So I know I'm a little biased here, but the one thing that CD needs to do to just like take himself from being a, I think it's pretty well established. He's a top 10 receiver in the NFL right now. Right. But to go from like number nine to like number three is just have one of those years where you have like 14 touchdowns. Yeah. I was just going to say, right. Whether you're dominating in the red zone or you just have a bunch of long touchdowns. Cause I think he had nine last year, which is, that's a fine number, but have one of those Des Bryant years where, it's 16 touchdowns, and you're just scoring on every single red zone opportunity. If you can do that, the Cowboys can be efficient in the red zone. They're going to be almost unstoppable. Yep, I agree. And and CD Lamb is going to be a huge part of that without a yep. doubt. All right, that is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen every day. Get every day, or we'll be back next week to get you ready for Cowboys Giants on Sunday wow. night football. It's going to be an absolute blast. Make sure that you're checking out our show on YouTube. We are free and available on all platforms. Go follow Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. Enjoy your long weekend, and we'll see you right back here next week.